Before we discuss what exactly is the largest number, we need to set a few conditions in place so that things don't go crazy. Okay, condition number one, the largest number must be useful in some way. Even if it has a very, 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 very tiny amount of use, that would be fine as long as there is some use to such number. Second of all, the number must not be arbitrary. For example, one million. And how did you get to that one million? I know you said it, but how did you get to that one million? So the number must not be arbitrary. Third of all, you can't say the largest number anyone could think of plus one. That is not allowed and that's cheating. Okay. Fourth of all, and most important of all, no infinity. The number must be finite. Now that last point I'd like to stay on for a bit because infinity is a very interesting concept. It behaves much more differently than your normal numbers. To explain how that is, let me give you something called Hilbert's paradox of the Grand Hotel. Let's say that you are the manager of a hotel with an infinite number of rooms and your hotel is fully booked. There's an infinite number of guests. Let's say that someone shows up and would like to check in in your hotel. How do you solve this problem? Do you tell them that it's fully booked? Well, you don't have to because your hotel is very special. How do you solve this problem? You tell the guest in room number one to move to room number two. And you tell the guest in room number two to move to room number three. And you tell the guest in room number three to move to room number four. And you keep doing this throughout the entirety of the hotel. And now you have room number one empty. And you can tell the, the guest to check in that. That means infinity is equals to infinity plus one. Yeah? Very weird. But it gets weirder. Let's say that an infinite number of guests show up and would like to check in in your hotel. Do you tell them that it's fully booked? No. Again, your hotel is very special. How do you solve this problem? You tell the guests in room number one to move to room number two. And you tell the guests in room number two to move to room number four. And you tell the guests in room number three to move to room number six. And then you tell the guests in room number four to move to room number eight. And you keep doing this throughout the entirety of the hotel and now you have an infinite number of rooms and you can accommodate an infinite number of guests that mean that means infinity plus infinity equals infinity you see the problems with infinity good we can move on then so with that said let's try and find the largest number first we need an arbitrary number i know i've said that the largest number cannot be an arbitrary number but this is only a comparison point we're going to try and find useful numbers and see whether they are larger than the arbitrary number clear good so let's pick a google a google is our comparison point a google is 10 to the power of a hundred or it is one with a hundred zeros next to it Okay, so is the number of atoms in your body larger than a Google? The number of atoms in your body are around uh, 7 octillion. So no, it is not larger than a Google. Is it the number of atoms in Earth? That would be about 133 quandecillion. And no, again, not larger than a Google. How about the number of atoms in the observable universe? That would be about a hundred quadrillion vigintillion. Nope, still not bigger than a Google. This is the number of atoms in the observable universe and we can't even be a Google. However, there are other areas of mathematics that could be useful that could beat a Google. One way is through this crazy Rubik's Cube over here, which has this many ways to arrange. That is a number that is larger than a Google. So we beat a Google. Can we beat a number even bigger than a Google? Can we beat a Googleplex, which is 10 to the power of a Google? Can we do that? Let's see. How about the number of different possible universes calculated by and where they ended up with 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 16? Nope, not larger than a Google Plex. How about once they assume that if we were not limited as observers to distinguish more universes, 
How about that number? That number is 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 7. And that number is larger than a Google Plex. So let's pick our next arbitrary number. How about a Google Plexian, which is 10 to the power of a Google Plex? Can we find a useful number larger than it? Now, beyond this point, I will not get into too much detail about why the numbers that I will mention are useful. All you have to know is that there is some usefulness to them. If you'd like to know why, I've put links in the description. Anyway, with that, let's try and beat a Google Plexian, which is 10 to the power of a Google Plex. So, how about this guy's numbers here? There was one that was 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 34. So no, it doesn't beat a Google Plexian. But then there was 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 963. So we beat a Google Plexian. Beyond this point, I'm not going to mention any arbitrary comparison point like a Google Google Plex or a Google Plexian because the numbers that I will mention you useful numbers, still useful numbers, are so big, so large, so ridiculously huge that you can't even write them down. That's how big they are about to get. So with that said, we have next up Graham's number. So what exactly is Graham's number? Graham's number is the upper bound to a certain solution in something called Ramsey theory. This bound is between 11 and Graham's number. The solution to this problem falls in that range. As I said, I'm not going to get in too technical about why this number is useful. If you want to understand it, link is in the description. Graham's number is so big it is difficult to explain in what with using normal mathematical notation so we need to learn a new form of mathematical notation called knots up arrow notation in order to express how ridiculously big graham's number really is so what exactly is knots up arrow notation let's begin with a three three okay and put an up arrow that's knots up arrow notation and another three. Uh, you will find out that this is very simple. This is three to the power of three. The answer to that, 27. Nothing too complicated about it. So far, so far. Uh, let's now put two arrows. Three, arrow, arrow, three. That would be three, arrow, three, arrow, three. That's three to the power of three to the power of three. And the result of that is something like 7.6 trillion. As you can see that we went from 27 to 7.6 trillion with only adding one additional arrow. Um, but things after this point get start to get a bit crazy. So let's take three now and put three arrows between it and another three. That's three, arrow, 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 three. Cool. Now, this means this is three arrow arrow three arrow arrow three. That's three arrow arrow seven point six trillion. And this means this is three to the power of 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 three. And you keep saying this seven point six trillion times. Do you see how the number just exploded from just having one arrow to three? In order to find Graham's number, you have to begin with three arrow, 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 three. That's four arrows. So three arrow, 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 three. We already know that three arrow, 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 three with three arrows is an unbelievably large number. So you can see that the number that you'll get from having four arrows this is the reaction that you would have to it. Speechless. But Graham's number is, is even much, much larger than that. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to take the result of three, four arrows, three, and you call that G1. I would suggest you would sit on a toilet right now because things are about to get insane, not just crazy. So what happens next? What happens next? Uh, you, you take G1, which is the result of three arrow, 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 three, four arrows of three, and then call that G1. Write down another three. Are you sitting down? And you put next to it a G1 number of arrows. And once you finish, you write down another three. Just big, big, really big. And you're not done. You're not done. 
you, you still have to uh, progress a bit more. Then what you need to do is take the result of that and you call it G2. Cool? You take G2, again you write a 3, and then a G2 number of arrows between it and another 3. Okay? You take the result of that and you call it G3. You take G3, write down a 3, G3 number of arrows, 3. You take the result of that, call it G4, and so on and so forth. You keep going until you end up with G64. And G64 is Graham's number. You can see how just uh, big Graham's number really is. It's ridiculously big. Really, really, really big. And what's surprising about this is that there are even larger useful numbers than Graham's number. Now beyond this point, beyond this point, I have to confess here, my understanding of those numbers, of numbers larger than Graham's number, starts to collapse. I don't get them. I don't understand them. So I will have to trust my friends, our friends, at Googleology Wiki, which is a wiki dedicated entirely to very, very big numbers. And uh, yeah, so let's go into that. Be prepared for it. Be prepared. Let's go. One of those numbers is 33. 33 is so big, so massive, that I feel like I'm gonna suffocate from how big 33 really is. You know, at least with Graham's number, we could visualize how we got to the result through North's up arrow notation, but North's up arrow notation is not enough to express how large 33 really is. There is something called chained arrow notation, which is like North's up arrow notation, but on crack. You could get a number that's close to Graham's number using this notation through writing this down. This is a number close to Graham's number. But even chained arrow notation, 3 3 would laugh at it. 3 3 is that large, it is that big. Now I tried. I tried to find a simple explanation of 3-3, and as I've said before, it is in unbelievably difficult to comprehend numbers after Graham's number. 3-3 is so large. I've looked up, I've, I've really looked up people that try, that try to explain what 3-3 really is in, in layman terms, but I'm convinced, I'm really convinced that it is impossible to really explain what 3-3 really is. It's an unbelievable number, and what's Really unbelievable is that there is a number even larger than 33. And this is where we arrive at Loader's number. Loader's number is big. It's large. It's stupidly large. It's horrendously big. It is much larger than 33. It is much, much larger than Graham's number. You see, at this point, all I have for you to give you some sense of how big numbers are at this point is just to explain it to you through words. You can't even imagine the process for getting these numbers. At least I could tell you how Lauder's number came to be. It was the result of a contest that was held. The condition was to write a C program in 512 characters or less that will generate the largest possible output. The winner of which is a guy called Ralph Loader, hence why it's called Loader's number. But even then, there's a larger number than that. And this is where we arrive at Ryu's number. Ryu's number is bigger than anything else I've mentioned so far. It is very, very, very large. That's how big it really is. So how did Ryu's number came to be? Well, there was this contest, an MIT contest, that pitted two people against each other. Adam Elga and Augustine Rayu. There was even a poster for the competition. Um, now, the point of this competition was to find the largest number possible, but according to certain rules. First, you could not use primitive semantic vocabulary. For example, you couldn't say the smallest number bigger than any number named by a human so far. That is not allowed. You also had to explain any sort of unusual notation to the audience. For example, I explained to you earlier something called North's up arrow notation, which is probably something that is new to you. So if they used any kind of new notation, they had to explain it 
to the audience. They also had to fit this expression that would name the largest number in a regular sized chalkboard. And finally, no infinity. So as you can see, the rules are kind of similar to what I mentioned earlier in the video. Now that we know the rules, this is what happened during the competition. Ryu went first. He approached the board and he wrote one. Not the largest number, he was just trying to start. Okay, and then Elga came in and he retaliated by writing nine, 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 and so on and so forth. Then Ryu countered by writing one, 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 one. He actually got a larger number because one takes less space than a nine, so you could write more of them on the board. And then Elga came back with a brilliant idea. Instead of the ones, he started putting exclamation marks all the way until he was left with only two ones. So now you had an 11 with a lot of exclamation marks next to it. Now, of course, exclamation marks indicate that this is a factorial operation. So the number that you get at the end of it is, is pretty big. Things started to get complicated afterwards and weird notation started to get used until Ryu won. How? With the following expression. The smallest number bigger than any finite number named by an expression in the language of set theory with a Google symbols or less. Now that is not the final expression. If you would like to find the final expression, I would suggest you read an article written by Ryu himself, link is in the description, where he takes that expression and dissects it down to what gives birth to Ryu's number. Now you might have this thought swimming about that says, hold on a minute, didn't you mention in the beginning of the video that the largest number must be useful in some way? It must not be arbitrary. Ryu's number came as a result of a contest that wanted to find the largest number. How is it useful and how is it not arbitrary? To that, here is my argument. You can be convinced by it and you cannot be convinced by it. It's up to you at the end of the day. Now that contest was actually an exercise to show how, how philosophy and mathematics actually intersect with one another. So there's your usefulness right there. And when it comes to, be, to it not being arbitrary, you have to remember that the contestants, they had to work with conditions in order to find the largest number. So in this case, the number isn't exactly arbitrary and it is useful. However, this is, at the end of the day, my argument. At the same time, they also wanted people to be entertained and that contest entertained them. So there is more usefulness for you right there. I don't know. It's up to you. It's up to you at the end of the day. I just wanted to actually point that out uh, for you. Agustin Rayu, you know, the guy that came up with Rayu's number, is actually mainly a philosopher, not a mathematician. Okay. So it is very interesting how a guy that's involved in philosophy actually came up with a number that is so big, so large, like Ryu's number. Okay. Now I also have to point out that in an interview Ryu mentioned that after the contest he wanted people to get out and have this idea in their head that how can I come up with a number that is larger than Ryu's number. And you probably can still do that. Go ahead, read the article uh, that Ryu has written, and if you can understand how Ryu's, come, uh, how Ryu's number came to be, try and come up with a number that is la larger than Ryu's number. But for now, Ryu's number is the largest number, and with that, that has been my take on what exactly is the largest number. Thank you very much.